always put on a secondary, secondary pair of gloves. So when you're ready to uh, process your wafer on the spinners, the first thing you're going to want to do is select the correct spinner for your uh, coating that you're going to be putting on. So the first spinner, Laurel 1, is for SU8 and lift off resist. Then we have Laurel 2, which is our, for our positive resist and, and the other standard processing resists. And then we have our headway spinner, which we use for wafers that are larger than six inches and also special coatings that do not uh, go in Laurel 1 or Laurel 2. For this demo, we're going to be using Laurel 2 and we're going to be doing a positive tail resist S1813. So I'm going to select Recipe H, which is already pre-programmed into the spinner. Recipes A through K have already be, been programmed into the spinner, but should always be verified before running. To verify the recipe, you'll need to press the F1 function key, and that'll put it into program mode. Then you'll verify step one of two is at the correct set point. Set point of five seconds at 500 RPM. Then I'll step it to step two of two, which is the set point of 30 seconds at 4,000 RPM. So always inspect your spinner and make sure that it's clean before use. What I'll do is take a text wipe, clean room wipe, and I'll squirt some acetone and IPA. And then starting with the lid, I'll wipe the lid, and then I'll wipe the inner chamber. You never want to spray directly onto the uh, chop or onto this um, dome. The dome of the chop, the dome of the spinner. When you're finished uh, cleaning your spinner, always deposit your uh, rag into the proper trash can. This is our fire resistant trash can for solvents only. So first center your substrate onto the chuck, then you'll apply the vacuum by turning on the switch. You'll want to verify that your vacuum reading is showing up here on the top right hand corner. If not, you'll press the vacuum switch until it does. Close the lid and start your vacuum, or start your run. First, deposit acetone, followed by IPA. Allow the spinner to finish spinning. Always open the lid slowly so that no residue deposits onto your substrate. Turn off the vacuum. Then you'll take your substrate and dehydrate it on a hot plate. After your dehydration step on the hot plate, some resists require that you prepare the surface with uh, an HMDS or hexamethyl disiopsin. To do this process, you'll place your sample then you'll take your pipette and you'll fill the cap reservoir inside the chamber about halfway then you'll allow your sample to sit for five to ten minutes so after your wafer has sat in the chamber, a monolayer has been formed on the surface of the wafer, so it's being, it's now prepared to have the resist coat applied. Again, center your sap, your center your sample. After 
placing your sample in the center of the chunk, you'll apply your vacuum. Then you'll verify that the wafer is secure. And take your nitrogen gun and then just lightly blow off the surface of the wafer. I'm using my hand so that I can feel the nitrogen going across the sample. Then you'll take a pipette. You will blow it off also. At the same time, I'm squeezing the bulb. When you get your resist out of the bottle, you want to make sure you don't touch the sides or the direct bottom. Always squeeze the bulb before you place the pipette into the resist. Always allow the resist to stop before removing the pipette. Remove any air. Deposit directly onto the center of your sample. Stop short of the end of the pipette. Once your sample has stopped spinning, you want to remove the edge bead or EBR. Apply some solvent to the end of your swab. Dab the swab so the excess acetone has been removed. Start at the bottom of your sample. Then move to the edge. Just turn off your vacuum. Remove your sample. Post bake your sample at the proper temperature and time. To clean your spinner, take a dummy four inch wafer, place it in the center of the chuck, apply your vacuum, close the lid, start your spinner, heat acetone, to help remove the residual resist off the side of the chamber. Always remove your wafer before you start wiping the inside of the chamber. Take another text wipe, apply acetone and IPA. Start with the lid. If you clean the bottom first, you will more likely get resist on your cup. After cleaning your bowl, you'll want to remove your secondary pair of gloves and then put on a fresh pair of gloves. So the 1.75 vacuum chuck that's installed here can be used up to four inch wafers. Anything larger, you would use the four inch vacuum chuck, which would be good for five inch and six inch wafers. To apply this chuck, you remove the 1.75 chuck. Make sure there's an O-ring installed. And only snug tight the chuck, not to over tighten. You may strip out 
the threads. For samples smaller than two inch wafers, you'll want to use the different adapters. So we have the mid fragment adapter, the midi fragment adapter, and then the micro fragment adapter. For this demonstration, I'm gonna use the mini fragment adapter. For doing the edge feed removal on smaller fragments, again dab the excess off with a swab. Then you'll just leave the vacuum on. Then you could knock down the edge of the resist. You'll also want to remove any resist on the corner underneath the sample. When you're finished spinning your fragments, you want to remove the adapter and clean it properly. You also want to verify that the chuck is clean. Then the chamber. Starting with the lid. Place your gloves again. Always document your run on the logbook. You're going to want to put which spinner you used. We use Laurel 2. You want to put down what recipe we used. That was recipe H. And then what resist type we used. Then the vacuum reading. The last is your hot plate temperature. Occasionally the EPDM O-rings, which are the proper O-rings to use for solvents, will be either lost or damaged. If you do need to replace the O-ring, we do have an assortment of O-rings supplied, properly labeled for the chuck adapter or chuck being used.